In this tutorial, we'll look at how to apply a template to a spread in eDesign. Most of the templates in eDesign are double page designs, and applying the template requires that you have both the left and right page open for editing. To access templates inside of page design, click the template icon on the library panel shown here. You can use the scroll bar along the right to scroll up and down in the template library. To place a template on the spread, click, drag, and drop the template anywhere in the design area and the template will be applied. I'm going to choose Edit Undo to remove the template that I just placed. If you would like to see a template at a larger size, click the magnifying glass icon to open up the preview window. In preview, you can scroll through the template library by using the left and right arrow buttons. You can also apply templates from the preview window. Just click, drag, and drop on the design area. To close preview, click on the X in the upper right corner. If you apply a template and immediately decide that it is not what you want, the easiest way to remove it is to choose Edit Undo right after applying the template. Or you can go to the Edit menu and choose Select All. Then hit the Delete key on your keyboard to get rid of the template. If you drag a template and drop it on a spread that already contains design elements, you will receive this message. The message relates to an eDesign feature called Smart Template, which is covered in a later tutorial. If you receive this message and you would like to swap the new template for the old template, click Yes. The new template will replace the old one. You will also see this clipboard panel appear. This relates to the Smart Template feature, in this case, you can just click the X to close the clipboard panel. And that's the basics of applying templates in eDesign. Creating a custom template is a simple process in eDesign. Templates can be created by customizing one of the Herf Jones templates to suit your book's design, or by creating your own template from scratch. Let's say I like this layout as a starting place for some collage pages in the yearbook. I then changed the color of the graphics, and I added a text frame for a headline. Now to save this as a template for use on other pages, I just go to the File menu and choose Save as Template. The adjusted design will now appear in my template library, and I can apply it to other spreads in my book. You can also go to the Template section of the eDesign library and tag a template with keywords. Tagging templates is helpful because it makes the templates easier to locate when you're applying them to pages. You can also create a layout from scratch and save it as a template. Let's say I wanted to create a design that could go on my index pages. I'll use the rectangle tool to create a large frame in the background. I'll place in an image of the school, change the image to black and white, and apply some transparency. I'll now use the Rectangle tool to create a sidebar graphic and give it a blue fill. I'll use the Rectangle tool to create some more frames, give them a white stroke, and rotate each one slightly. Now that the design is ready, I'll go to the File menu and choose Save as Template. Now I can use this template to design my index pages so that they will be set when the advisor and editor are ready to flow in the index text. That's the basics of creating custom templates for your yearbook. eDesign's Smart Template feature allows you to experiment with multiple layouts even after you place content on your spread. To illustrate how Smart Template works, we'll start with this layout into which I've placed several photos. Let's say I'm not sure about this design and I would like to see how the same photos would look in a different template. All I have to do is drag and drop the new template onto the existing design. eDesign will ask me if I want to replace the content. If I click Yes, eDesign applies the new template and places all of the images into the new design. Because the image frames on the new template may not match exactly the ones on the old, you may need to adjust the crop on some of the photos, but Smart Template does the bulk of the work for you. In some cases, a template may have fewer photo frames than was on the original design. In that case, you'll receive this message. You can then look in the clipboard panel that has appeared on screen. The images that are currently on the spread have the Added to Page flag. The images that don't have the flag are not on the page. 
However, if I drag and drop another template with more frames, I can then drag and drop the images from the clipboard panel back onto the design. You can also use the Smart Template feature on spreads that have custom text added. Take this spread for example. I've already added a custom headline and some captions. When I apply a new design, the photos are placed into the image frames and the custom text is placed in the text section of the clipboard panel. I can then drag and drop the text elements onto the proper spots in the new design. There's a shortcut for using the Smart Template feature. If you hold down the Shift key when you drag and drop a template, eDesign will go ahead and replace the content and not ask you about it. This speeds up the process because it bypasses the dialog box. You can close the clipboard panel at any time by clicking on the X in the upper right corner. If you want to get the clipboard panel back after closing it, you can go to the View menu and choose Show Clipboard Panel. Smart Template is a real time saver that can make your work more fun and efficient as you lay out your yearbook. Pop-ins are pre-designed page elements that can replace other elements of the same size and shape. They are a great way to create variety on your designs and add interesting coverage that your school will love. This tutorial will show you how to add pop-ins to layouts from the GoDesign collection. But pop-ins can be used with any layout that you create. Pop-ins are designed in three different geometric shapes. Each GoDesign book includes different designs for each pop-in shape. The GoDesign booklet is your best reference for using the pop-ins. The booklet depicts the three pop-in sizes with a corresponding color for each size. Blue pop-ins have a vertical rectangular shape. Green pop-ins have a horizontal rectangular shape. Red pop-ins are square in shape. On many of the layouts depicted in the GoDesign booklet, you will see dashed shapes that are blue, green, or red. These non-printing dashed lines indicate the locations where one of the pop-in shapes would work perfectly. Locate a spot on a template into which you would like to place a pop-in. Place that layout on a spread in eDesign and remove the elements in the pop-in area by selecting them and pressing delete on the keyboard. Then choose a pop-in that corresponds to the size and shape of the area. In this example, we are using a green pop-in. Noting the name of the pop-in in the GoDesign booklet can make it very easy for you to locate the pop-in you would like to use. Go to the pop-in section of the eDesign library and scroll through the pop-ins or you can type the pop-in number in the search field and hit enter or return on the keyboard. When you locate the pop-in, click, drag, and release it on the page where you would like it to appear. When the pop-in appears on the page, all of the elements are selected. This makes it easy to reposition the pop-in to place it in exactly the right spot. When the pop-in is placed properly, it is a good idea to lock the position of the pop-in. While the elements are selected, click on the padlock icon on the left side of the control panel. When editing the pop-in, you can unlock individual text frames to make them larger or smaller as needed. Once the pop-ins are on the page in eDesign, everything is editable. You can enter your own text, change the fonts, swap colors, add or remove elements. And that's how you add pop-ins to your layouts in eDesign.